Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. And this module is on protocols and addresses. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to go through specifically the requirements from 220-701, Section 4.1. So now we're getting into more networking. We want to know how to configure the basic networking functions, especially IP addresses and some of the TCP IP settings that we would need to get a computer up and running. I need to learn more about what these protocols are. And there's also this idea of classes of IP addresses. We're going to learn all about that in this module. We use protocols extensively in our computer networks. And protocols really are nothing more than a language. It's a very specific language that is used between systems. And there are no changes in dialect. There's no changes in word form. When you have protocols on a computer network, is a very, very structured language. Everybody on the network has to be speaking exactly the same protocol and has to be speaking it in exactly the same way. And you'll find that most protocols that are used across computer networks are very, very standardized for that very reason. You don't want to have a printer or another computer not understanding what you're telling it. Everybody that's on the network has to be speaking the same protocol to be able to communicate back and forth. And very often, our computers will speak multiple protocols, multilingual computers, so that if we're talking to an IPv4 computer, then we're able to communicate properly. But if that computer is running NetBIOS or if it's running IPv6, we may also need to communicate to that. So you'll find that very often our computers have multiple protocols. They're back in the, the olden days of networking. There are some protocols that are kind of like the Latin of our computer networking. You don't see them much anymore in actual use. Things like IP, IPX, SPX, which is a set of protocols from Novell. And Apple had their own proprietary protocols that were used to communicate within Apple computing products called Apple Talk. You really don't see those anymore out there in the world. They've been replaced by much more modern I say quote unquote modern protocols. But in reality, our computer protocols have really been around for a number of years. A very common protocol, one of the very earliest, is one called NetBIOS, which stands for Network Basic Input Output System. It was a way for our computers to talk to each other over the network. But NetBIOS itself was a little bit limiting in how it communicated. It couldn't route anywhere. And it didn't have any of the modern functionalities of the things that Windows needed. So Windows actually improved on it and created really a new set of protocols called NetBuoy, which was NetBIOS extended user interface, some Windows specific functionality, and really very specific to Microsoft in the way that it worked. But even NetBuoy had limitations. In our large routed internet networks these days, NetBuoy had no way to route to different places. So it's slowly really faded off. And we don't really use NetBuoy on our computer systems any longer. These days, almost everything is done via TCP IP. It is the major protocol used out on the internet. And it stands for Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. It is uh, throughout the world. Almost every machine that's on the internet, and even machines that aren't on the internet, have at least a basic knowledge of communicating. They're going to be using TCP IP to be able to do that. If you run across and you need to configure a machine, then it's going to be really important that you know how to configure the basics of TCP IP and know exactly what configuration parameters need to go in there for that machine to communicate. We're going to learn all about that in this module. If you were to go to your computer and go to a command prompt and type ipconfig slash all, and I did one and I piped it to this more command, you would get a view like this. This is everything that's from my Ethernet adapter. It gives me a description of what this adapter is. It tells me this is the MAC address or the physical address of this device. A DHCP is enabled here, and auto configuration is enabled. There's an uh, IPv6 address. We won't get into much of that with the A plus requirements, but it's an interesting set of protocols that's coming uh, very upward uh, and very new in modern protocol use. IPv4 is what most people are using on their computer. And my IP address is 192.168.0.8. We'll learn more about what these things are in just a moment. There's the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And also, I have a default gateway, a DHCP server, a DNS server, and Windows will use NetBIOS over TCP IP to communicate some of its Windows functions as well. So a lot of different addresses just on one single card to be able to get this computer to talk across the network. Let's break down what some of these things are and learn more about where these addresses are really coming from. 
IP stands for Internet Protocol, and the primary Internet Protocol version that is used over the Internet is IP version 4. The newest version of IP is IP version 6. So you may see people referring to this newer version of IP called IPv6. But for the most part, almost everybody today is using IPv4 as a mainstay. If you're familiar with the OSI stack and how it works, it's a little bit outside the scope of the a exam. Uh, but the OSI layer 3 is where you might fit the IP protocol version 4. Now you'll notice that IP version 4 has these four octets, we call them. And, and these octets are represented in a, in a mode that we understand. So it's a base 10 192.168.1.131. So those are numbers us human beings can recognize. And if you're looking at IP addresses on the internet, you may see it's 10.1.3.7. It's always in these groups of four. That's how this IP addressing works. Underneath the surface, of course, the computers don't deal with things in that base 10 mode. They deal with things binary. It's either 1 or 0. So underneath the surface, the way the computer sees 192.168.1.131 is with all these 1s and zeros. Now, the IP uh, configuration and the, the addressing scheme that's here in binary is one that's interesting to see. But generally, we don't even see that as human beings. It's not one that's presented to us. And as far as the A plus exam is concerned, you don't have to know the details about how to calculate the binary from all of these things. If you plan on taking the network plus exam, you will need to know those pieces. But it's important for A plus that you just know underneath, this is all ones and zeros. How it's presented to us makes it very easy for us to manage as human beings. You'll hear each one of these little sections between the dots referred to as an octet. That's because it's eight of these ones and zeros put together, making up an octet. You may also hear it referred to as a byte, which is how our Intel-based computers see eight characters stuck together. It's a single byte. It's also referred to as eight bits. All put together, this is 32 bits of content or four bytes long. So whenever we say the, the IP address, it's a four byte address. That's what we're referring to. Even though we may think that one character is a byte represented this way, 192.168.1.131, that's only four bytes that we would have to keep track of. Now you'll notice that the, the since this is eight bits that we've got here, if we made each one of these a number one and we calculated up that what that would be, the biggest number you could ever have in any one of these sections would be 255. And that's why when you start looking at some of our subnet masks, you'll notice that they're 255.255.255.something, for instance. And that's because the biggest number you could ever have here is a 255. Obviously, the smallest number you can have here is a zero. So if you ever see any number other than that in any of these particular columns, in any of these particular sections, you know that's not a valid IP address.